Okay, traders, that's 2 p.m. UK time. And we are going to get going here with this week's live trade analysis session um, with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, you can just type a Y in the chat box. So I know that we are good to, uh, to get going here. <coughs> good stuff. Okay, so before we jump into today's content, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for uh, today's discussion, uh, the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine and they're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, one point of uh, housekeeping before we continue guys is that uh, if you do have any questions, um, with respect to any of the charts I cover or anything to do or additionally to do with trading, if you can make a note of those and I'll open up a, uh, a Q&A at the end of the session to cover off any questions. Okay, so for those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to <clears throat> excuse me, to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup. Uh, having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, ultimately giving back all my gains and experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor, for a period of 18 months to two years, I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing a strategy that suited my personality, researching and, and extensively back and forward testing strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game, in which we're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the market. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, provide, exclusively providing uh, market and trade analysis uh, through their blog. And you can register for updates, the day, for my daily market outlook, uh, through uh, putting, putting your email address on their site and you'll get those delivered to your inbox. I guess my, uh, my other passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. At FX Career Swap, we offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talent. We don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindsets uh, 
development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. So that gives you a sense of where it is I'm coming from. Uh, now what I want to do is jump into the charts and we're going to start uh, with taking a look here at the S&P 500 on the uh, looking at the daily time frame. And so uh, where we're at uh, at the moment is that we are seeing the potential here for uh, the prices to stall out at this 42.30 level. Um, we're seeing a bit of a reversal today heading into the cash session open. Um, what we are looking for, what I'd, I'd be initially looking for now is a test of this uh, monthly pivot at 41.57. If we can get a reversal from there, then I see the potential for another high into tomorrow, um, into the non-farm payrolls data. Uh, and from there, uh, timing suggests that we should then see a pullback, uh, certainly to test the ascending trend line support at 41.31, uh, weekly range support 4100, um, but maybe something uh, a bit more pronounced as we head into next week. From a timing perspective, this, uh, this period heading into the back end of tomorrow, and the middle part of next week is, uh, is a window where we could see a bit of volatility in the market. So we really want to pay attention to uh, one, can we hold the monthly pivot today? If we don't, then the period or the window of um, perceived volatility could already be open. And if that's the case, what we would be looking at would be um, an equality objective versus this swing high, which would actually put us back down into 40.29 as the target zone if we don't see a recovery in prices today. So it's going to be very important to see how we trade at the as the, the cash session opens, uh, 2.30 UK time, uh, to see if we can uh, hold the pivot and get that uh, new high and then see uh, and then see prices uh, roll over a bit into the back end of the week or the beginning of next week. Uh, NASDAQ looks a bit weaker at the moment. It's actually sitting on the monthly pivot now. So if we get a close through there today, then that sets up an equality objective versus the current uh, potential B wave high here at uh, 13.792 uh, down to 12.659 will be the downside equality objective that we'll be targeting if, uh, if we close through the, through the monthly pivot and, uh, and get a, a bearish close here. Similarly with the Dow Jones, <clears throat> looks like it got a pin bar uh, set, a pin bar posted uh, midweek, and we now look like uh, we could be rolling over here again. What we're focused on, or the, the pivotal area now, is going to be this monthly pivot test. If we can hold the monthly pivot, then again we could see we could still have the potential to see one more high before uh, rolling over. But if we don't hold the monthly pivot, then uh, short positions will be warranted. And what we'll be looking for again is the equality objective versus the swing structure there, which would actually put us down into the new monthly range support uh, at 33,000, just above 33,000. So these uh, these closes there are going to be uh, are going to be pivotal. DAX also rolling over uh, from a, its potential double top scenario here. Um, not as clean. The price action isn't as clean as it is in these US indices, so I'm going to focus on those. Uh, the Nikkei, weakest of the lot really, and uh, has still failed to actually uh, recover in terms of the uh, in terms of how the other indexes have been performing. So if we uh, if we roll over today, then I'd be looking for the Nikkei to uh, to trade lower into. We've held that one. Let's have a look at this one from here. So we could see the Nikkei trading down into the 26,000 level uh, versus the last swing structure. The VIX, obviously the volatility index. We anticipate when markets are, uh, are rolling over that the VIX is going to pop, and we're seeing a bit of a pop here. I was actually looking for the VIX to make a new low um, into this trend line support at the 14. 14.4 uh, 14 level, but uh, we are seeing the VIX spike up. So if the VIX equally can hold its monthly pivot as resistance, then we could still see that, that next leg to the downside before seeing what I anticipate is going to be a spike into next week. Moving into uh, the dollar, this is the equal weighted dollar index. Obviously, as, uh, as we see a bit of risk aversion come into the markets, the dollar 
picks up a little bit here. Um, let's the cleaner price action, I think, is in uh, the broader dollar index. So this is dollar index versus a basket of six currencies. So what I'd be looking for is the dollar index to hold the monthly pivot and then make a new low tomorrow. I do potentially into this job state. So if we get a blow, if we get a blowout number tomorrow in terms of the job data, um, far exceeding expectations, then what that, uh, from a market dynamic perspective and from a thematic perspective, that should bring the Fed back into, into, the, uh, into discussion with respect to tapering. So at the moment, obviously, the, the, the rhetoric has been they're not even thinking about thinking about tapering. But I think if we see a blowout jobs number tomorrow and, uh, and we see some weakness heading into that from the dollar and um, maybe we just take out those prior lows, uh, but with all this uh, momentum divergence we've got, then I see the potential for a, uh, for a correction in terms of this, uh, this dollar index. Gold. <coughs> So gold uh, at the resistance area, I'm looking for a pullback in gold now for gold to test 1860, the ascending trend line support and the, uh, and the monthly pivot here. Watch for bullish reversal patterns from that area to, uh, to set long positions, looking for a test of, uh, of 1960 in terms of gold. Silver. <coughs> Silver's so breaking, uh, breaking down a bit here now. If, uh, if again, if we get a close through the monthly pivot here in silver, then we could see uh, we could have the potential for a three-way corrected move here back into. Let's just draw this in. So I've been looking for a move back into this uh, twenty-six level to uh, to set longs from there for the next leg to the upside. What you want to be focusing on is, is gold, really. As long as gold holds its support, uh, then it should take silver with it. So watch that 1860 level in terms of, uh, in terms of gold. Crude, <laughs> it's coming into resistance here. I, uh, I posted this as a, uh, a chart of the day earlier. Um, watching this, uh, this 7060 level, where we've got this potential broadening pattern developing, uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns from, uh, from the trend line resistance 71 and uh, weekly range resistance at 7060. I think that's a decent opportunity on the short side in terms of uh, crude, looking for a three way corrected move into the ascending trend line support at 64 before setting a base there for the next, uh, the next leg to the upside. Copper also starting to roll over here. So whilst we hold the uh, 470.59 level, then we have an equality objective now, uh, 425.05. And then from there, we could easily see the next leg to the upside. So uh, this is the level to pay attention to, 40.25.05, and watch the bullish reversal patterns there. I think that should, uh, that should set the base for the next leg of upside in terms of copper. Bitcoin. <coughs> So I was uh, talking about this symmetry swing resistance at the 43,200 level. We, we didn't really test it. And now we've got another potential pattern developing here. So we have um, this leg here versus this leg versus this leg. So that will be the equality objective. And that now broadly coincides with the symmetry swing resistance. So this level is gonna be pivotal now. Even if we see some strength here in terms of Bitcoin, Watch for the confluence at the 43,880 level. Uh, bearish reversal patterns there, and I still think we've got to run at the 20,000 uh, yearly pivot before we try and put in a more meaningful base. Dollar yuan. So the dollar yuan has really been driving uh, this dollar story. Uh, People's Bank of China have come out this week and want to uh, remove the notion that it's a one way trade and they put in some FX reserve requirements for uh, national banks. So I'm looking for uh, the dollar yuan, obviously in line with the dollar index, to put in a base here and, uh, and for us to trade higher. Again, we've got that uh, significant momentum divergence. So once we can get through this trend line resistance, the monthly pivot, weekly range resistance, 60, uh, 641, I think we've got a clear run then to, uh, to 650 in terms of the dollar yuan. Dollar yen. <coughs> Still hugging this trend line, uh, didn't break down, or it looked like it was going to, but we didn't get uh, consecutive closes. And so now the upside objective versus 
uh, the current swing structure is actually 110.85 before, uh, before we would look for um, the potential for some weakness in the dollar yen. Swissy. <coughs> so we have a potential inverse head and shoulders scenario here. We've taken out the trend line resistance. All I'm waiting for really now is a close through 90.30 set long positions. And certainly we can start to think about a move up to uh, 91.80 or 92 before we see before that becomes a decision point for the markets where either we we're either roll over from there and make new lows or we could be talking about putting in a more meaningful bottom here and looking for further upside so looking for that close through the monthly pivot uh, 1930 1935 I like uh, I like long positions in uh, the dollar Swiss Looney uh, still going nowhere fast here. And, and this is kind of the story of a bunch of these markets at the moment. We've been in a period of exceptionally low volatility, but as I said last week, that low volatility uh, begets high, higher volatility. And I anticipate we're heading into that phase now, uh, the back end of this week, uh, the early to middle part of next week. So we'll have to see, can the, uh, can the loony break through um, the range resistance here, 121.50, and get a move up into 124. The descending trend line resistance would be the, uh, the play there. The euro continues to hold trend line support. I'm looking for the euro to break 121.50 and for that to set up a corrective phase back down into uh, the 120 zone. So just waiting to see if we can get a close through that monthly, <coughs> monthly pivot there to uh, see some further downside in terms of the euro. And again, that's all I'm talking about is a, is a correction at this stage. Certainly we hold 120 and then it will be time to think about looking for bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side to, uh, to take out these prior cycle highs at 123.50. Euro yen. <coughs> so the euro yen squeezing in this uh, ascending wedge. Again, if we're going to see some volatility uh, into next week, then I think that we should that should also uh, play out in these yen pairs. And I'm looking for them to break uh, to the downside for for some corrective action. Don't have any confirmations yet. One of the euro yen certainly want to see it close through the weekly pivot there, 133.47 before thinking about uh, getting in on the short side. Euro Swiss still looking for that 109.05 test before uh, for looking for a correct uh, for, for looking for a resumption really of the upside in terms of Euro Swiss. I think we uh, we could be in line to see that in the coming sessions. So pay attention to. 109.05 in the euro Swiss. Euro sterling, I was looking for this to, uh, to break the one at the A650 to see some uh, attempt at the resistance cluster here, 88, uh, 11 to 88, 30s, but still can't find its legs here. But whilst we hold above um, 85.60, there is still the potential that we see that 88. So we'll have to see if we can get some, uh, some positive closes on euro sterling. Euro CAD, um, still uh, again looking for a three wave corrective pattern to play out here, uh, but we're not getting any bullish reversals at this stage. So there's nothing for me to do at this juncture in the Euro CAD. Euro Kiwi, uh, I was in and out of this, uh, looking, for, uh, looking for it to break higher. But again, in this lower volatility, we're just not quite seeing the follow through at the moment. And so uh, we want to wait for the volatility to pick up before uh, re-engaging, but it does look poised to get, uh, to make a test here of the quality objective versus the WX pattern here, 166 up to the 172 handle, but uh, slow going at the moment. Sterling, I'm looking for Sterling to, uh, to ultimately break down here. Uh, I think we've got this major double top and uh, a bunch of momentum divergence. But again, just in terms of this lower volatility at the moment, it's, uh, it's, it's very slow going. But if we can take out the, uh, the support at 140, 140.80, um, and certainly we can be down at 139.80, and I think probably lower than that in terms of sterling before we, uh, we can think about more upside. So I'd be thinking in terms of certainly a, a 139 test, maybe monthly range support 138.20 before the next leg to the upside. But again, need to see that, uh, that monthly pivot go at 140.80 to, uh, to see things develop to the downside. 
Sterling yen. <coughs> Again, with these yens, if uh, if we start to see some weakness in terms of risk sentiment next week, I'm anticipating they will roll over. Uh, certainly pay attention to bearish reversal patterns into the 156.20, weekly range resistance 156.60, but nothing, uh, nothing right now. Sterling CAD. <coughs> This one could still be uh, looking to put in a corrective phase here to, if we can break through uh, 170, 170s, and I think there's a run potential equal leg setup there. So this type of scenario to test the 173.25, but again, there's heavy rotation within, uh, within the range here at the moment. So uh, tricky going. Sideways gain in the Aussie, but the the momentum now is looks to be shifting to the downside here again. But you know we've been trading in this seventy six eighty to you know hundred pit range in the Aussie uh, since the beginning of May. So we really need to see that break to the downside. So through the seventy six seventies would be an opportunity on the short side, and the target, the quality objective versus that swing high at seventy eight ninety four. Be seventy four nineteen, and like I say, momentum is starting to uh, to roll over a bit here, and we've had uh, we've had a bunch of uh, bearish trend candle developments. So just need to see the support go uh, on a closing basis to uh, to look at short positions. <coughs> Aussie yen, again, can't really get bearish on this until we take out this trend line support at the eighty four. 19. But again, if we are going to see uh, some risk, <coughs> some heightened risk uh, next week, then um, we've still got plenty of momentum divergence and a potential double top here. And uh, we could see this breakdown, but nothing to do just yet. Aussie Swiss, this one uh, looking for longs, but again, we're just trading in this very choppy range here. So uh, sidelines for now. We we'll need to take need it to take out the 6980s to look for an extension higher into the top side. There, 7130s would be the uh, the target range there. CAD, another one we've been watching. Maybe we're going to get the rollover here. So looking for a test of uh, 9259, which is the equality objective, versus the uh, 9762 high. We've also got the yearly pivot, weekly range support. Um, so if we can get down into this area and get bullish reversal patterns, I like uh, I like the long side then in terms of the Aussie CAD. Now to the Kiwi. So the Kiwi now sitting on this major trend line uh, support from last uh, last March lows. If we take that out on a closing basis, then we need to be thinking about the short side in terms of the Kiwi. I'd like to see the psych indicators flip red as well. But uh, a close through this uh, 7180 level will uh, will start to put focus on the downside in terms of the Kiwi and the equality objective versus the 7316 high is that uh, 68 level. So plenty to play for in terms of the downside in the Kiwi there. Kiwi yen <coughs> need to see it take out the trend line support really um, before looking on the uh, on the short side in terms of the Kiwi yen. Kiwi Swiss, nothing to do there. Nothing in the Kiwi CADs. So Swiss Yen, looking for it to break down here. It's, uh, it's struggled at the trend line support. It's sitting at its trend line resistance. So just looking for some bearish closes here. And, uh, and I think we can certainly be thinking about a retest of 120 from above. The other one that I'm watching closely is the CAD Yen. Squeezing here. So looking for a closing breach of this trend line support to set up a corrective move. And I think we can retest these, uh, the breakout higher here um, from that 88.30 level. So monthly range support at 88.43. So those are the charts that I'm watching. And the, the, I guess the, the key message here is uh, watching to see how we close today in terms of these equity markets. If we close weak today and, uh, and we roll over, then I would anticipate that we're in for uh, a period of weakness, probably into the, the middle part to uh, the middle part of next week, and that will give opportunities in a bunch of these uh, yen pairs and uh, and to play the dollar basically from the long side uh, for at least a, uh, a corrective move is uh, is my game plan. Okay, are there any questions? 
you have a question, you can type it in the chat box or a chart you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered. You can also type that in the chat box. Equally, if you don't have a question and uh, I've, uh, you, you've understood everything I've said, if you could type a, an N in the chat box so I know we're all on the same page. Okay, if there aren't any questions then, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wrap this one up here and we will uh, we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Oh, uh, what economic data are we looking at? Uh, just the, the, main, uh, the main data you want to pay attention to, <coughs> Jules, is the non-farm payrolls tomorrow. That's going to be driving uh, the next phase of price action in these markets. Um, Nathan, will you explain your trade pro FX strategy? Uh, Nathan, that, that's, uh, that would be a little bit, uh, that would double the length of this webinar today and then uh, I'm allocated 30 minutes, so uh, I won't be able to do that today. Are you a member of the trade pro program, Nathan? Okay, well then you should be able to access all the, uh, the trade strategy videos uh, through that program. And, uh, and it's all explained. There are it's a whole catalogue of, of videos. There are hundreds of videos uh, going through all of that stuff. Okay, if there are any other questions, I'll uh, I'll wrap this up here. Thanks very much, everyone. Hope this helps.